In this video, I'll show you how to sync WLTFX with ESP Home, so you can take advantage of all the features of ESP Home, like Voice Assistant, Bluetooth Proxy, and more, without losing on the amazing effects of WLT. And if you're ready, let's go! Last week, I was working on the review of the SLWF-03 controller, which is an amazing device. By the way, check out our giveaway if you haven't already. I was amazed by its potential. If you have been following my videos, you know that I have been working on making it easier to use a fully local voice assistant in your smart home. And one of the limitations that I found is the need for new hardware just to use it. I know that most of us already have some type of smart speaker at this point, and it's a shame that we can use our local voice assistant with them. So when I got the SLWF03, I was really excited by the possibility of using it to trigger assist by voice and get the answers to be played on my Google smart speaker. But as I mentioned it in the review, the available ESP Home implementation is kind of simple. And if we use it instead of Dolby LED, we lose all the light effects. So I got to do some research. And after lots of searching on the internet, I found the solution. But before we dive it into today's video, let me give a shout out to our sponsor, PCBWay. They are not just any PCB manufacturer. They are the one-stop online manufacturer with 24-7 customer service. PCBWay provides lightning fast PCB fabrication and assembly along with offerings in 3D printing and CNC machining. They provide the easiest way to make your smart home projects come to life. They recently added a new UV printing multicolor option that will allow you to print any image that you want onto your PCBs. How cool is that? Whether you're a student tinkering in your garage or a seasoned engineer working on the next big thing, PCBWay has your back. Thank you PCBWay for sponsoring this video. First of all, let me just clarify something. You can put ESP Home and WLED on the same device. They are two different firmwares that can control an ESP32 device. To get both functionalities, we will need to port the whole project into the other. And that is a really, really complex thing to do. More than that, maintaining that functionality on the same project will make the development of the firmware more background and time consuming. If you were about to write that question in the comments, here's the answer in advance. So how can we achieve that without having to re-implement the whole WLED effects functionality into ESP Home? Well, by using two ESP32 devices. But wait, before you click off this video, let me explain you how. We are going to use a DDP protocol implementation in ESP Home. This protocol is designed for sending real-time data to control multiple light effects over Ethernet. This is going to allow us not only to synchronize the color and brightness of our ESP Home lights with one WLED controller, like the WLED effect implementation of ESP Home currently does, but it will also synchronize the effects, so we can control our ESP Home lights using a WLED controller. And of course, not only that, thanks to the great flexibility in the WLED firmware, we can set each light as an individual segment. This will allow us to control them separately. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you find this video useful. Now, to get this working, go to my website, and here click on the example YAML device configuration. This is an example configuration for an ESP32 device with a light, but you can use your own project if you have one already. To use this, just copy the code, scroll down, and click on the Visual Studio Code add-on. Click on Open Link. If you haven't installed already, you can install it here. And if you have it, just click on Open Web UI. Here, just open the ESP Home folder. Click on New File. Let's give it a name. And then just paste the code. To save, just press Ctrl S. Then go to ESP Home. And here we can find our new device. Just click on edit. Now go back to my website. And now we need to add the DDP component. For this, just click on add DDP to your WLED configuration. I have a simple example here, but if you want more information, you can visit the documentation here. Then just copy the code and go back to Home Assistant. Here, just scroll down and paste the code at the end. Here, we just need to add the DDP effect to our light. For this, just copy this part and paste it under your light effects. And erase the light part from the example. And that's it. With this, your light should already have the ability to set DPP as an effect. The only thing that is left is set the effect as default when the device boots up. For this, go back to my website. And here, we just need to copy this code. If you become a member, you'll have access to all the scripts and automations right here on our website. But if you can't, don't worry. You can always copy the code from the video. I'll give you a sign where you can pause. And now just copy the code, go back to Home Assistant, scroll down, and paste it at the end. What this is going to do is check every one second if the Wi-Fi is connected, 
we need the Wi-Fi connection because this is a network effect. And it also has a switch, so you can turn off this behavior. Once it detects that the switch is on and the Wi-Fi is connected, it will activate the DDP effect. And then you just need to install it on your device. For this, just click on install, select one of the options, and just follow the prompts. Now go back to my website, and here go to ESP Home, and just click on this button. Click on open link, and here you should find the device. And that's it. Now let's move on to the WLED part. For this, go back to my website and click on this button. Click on open link. Here we just need to select the WLED device that we want to use. For this, the only restriction is that we need to be using WLED 13. Then just click on visit. Here just click on config, LED preferences, and here just scroll down and click on the plus icon. Then on the drop down, select DDP. Here you just need to configure the number of LEDs of your ESP home device and the IP address. If you want to know the IP address of your device, just go back to Home Assistant, click on next and click on visit. And here you can find the IP address of your device. If you want to be able to use each device as a separate light, we need to check this option. Then just scroll up and click on save. Now click on back and here we need to add a new segment. For this click on add a segment, just check if the number is correct and just click on apply. And that's it. With this you should be able to control your lights and their effects. For this example I am using one of the lamps that you see behind me and the main light behind my desk. If you want to control them individually just on mark one and we can change the effect. Now select the other one. And that's it. I can even do something like this. Okay, Nabu. Where is Ken? Ken is not in the room. And that's it. Now, if you go back to Home Assistant, under your double the device, you can find each light. And if you scroll down, you can find more options for configuration for each light, so you can fully control them individually. If you like my work, please consider becoming a member on Ko-fi or on Patreon, like all these amazing people. Currently, we are at 21% of our goal to get a budget to hire a new editor to help us create better content for you. So if you can't become a member, don't worry, you can help us with any donations. We are truly grateful for all your support. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!